Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Classic Comics. I was recently reading the Shadow comic book that Matt Wagner did for Dynamite Comics about a decade ago. Wagner attempted to update the Shadow's origin by clarifying some elements of it and also adding in some elements of the origin that was presented in the 1994 Shadow movie. That film presented a different version of his origin than the original one. This made me curious about the character's original origin, and I went to Wikipedia to learn more about it, and this led me down an interesting rabbit hole. These days, the Shadow is generally seen as one of the characters that influenced the creation of Batman, since they both are presented as crime fighters with this sort of grim Avenger of the Night type motif. And yes, there are similarities between the two. Both are crime fighters, both are a bit obsessive, both have a secret identity as a wealthy debonair playboy and dilettante. Of course, there are differences as well. Batman, of course, is opposed to killing, while the Shadow doesn't have any problem with killing criminals. Another big difference between the two is even the Shadow's civilian identity is a facade. Even his identity as Lamont Cranston isn't who he really is. This is also a way in which the Shadow movie differs from the original Pulp Origins. In the movie, the Shadow is Lamont Cranston, who at some point went to Asia and became a warlord and the leader of a heroin smuggling ring. He then falls under the influence of a holy man called the Tulku, who teaches him his powers of hypnosis and changes him into an agent of justice. He then returns to New York and uses his wealth to fund his war on crime. But his origin in the pulps back in the 30s is quite different. The Shadow was first published in 1931. The Shadow is actually a man named Kent Allard. He was a fighter pilot in World War I. After the war, Allard was flying over Guatemala and his plane crashed. He meets a native tribe called the Zinka, and the Zinka eventually help him return to New York, where he begins his career as a crime fighter. Shortly after arriving in New York, he confronts Lamont Cranston, who is a wealthy young playboy. Allard and Cranston look very similar to one another, and the Shadow proposes that Cranston allow the Shadow to, in effect, replace him, taking his identity and using his wealth to fund his crime-fighting efforts. He basically tells Cranston, if you don't agree to this, I'll just get rid of you and do it anyway, so it's not like Cranston has a whole lot of choice. Cranston agrees and moves overseas with the Shadow sending him money for him to live on. Now, at this point, the Shadow didn't have any special powers, but in 1937, the Shadow was given his own radio program, and it was here that his origin was revamped in many ways, making it similar to the movie version. This version travels to the Far East and learns various mystical abilities, including the power to cloud men's minds, and then returns to New York to fight crime. This more simplified version is very similar to Batman, minus the motivating tragedy of his parents being murdered, so it's easy to look at the two and see the influence. But as it turns out, the Shadow himself is actually a derivative character, combining elements of characters that existed before him. The Shadow seems to be heavily based upon a character who was popular in France before World War I called Judex. Judex is a vigilante who dresses in black and wears a wide-brimmed hat and cloak. He first appeared in a French film titled Judex, but it was later released in the U.S. under the title The Mysterious Shadow. In the film, Jacques de Tremuse adopts the guise of Judex and assembles an organization of former criminals and circus performers to bring down a corrupt banker named Favreau, who ruined Jacques' father, eventually driving him to take his own life. Like the Shadow and other later characters, he's an expert fighter, an expert at disguise, and he has a secret headquarters filled with high-tech gadgets. Around this same time, there was another French film called Ravenjar. The Ravenjar character had powers of hypnosis, with which he could cloud men's minds. Fantomas is an immensely popular character in French literature. 
He first appeared in 1911. Fantomas is basically a kind of evil Batman. He's a criminal genius, he's a master of disguise, and a ruthless serial killer. He's perpetually being pursued by a French police inspector named Jouvet. Judex was created as a heroic version of Fantomas that stops criminals rather than being one himself. But Fantomas himself was likely inspired by another French character that came before him named Arsène Lupin. Lupin is another master criminal, although in his case he draws the line at stealing and generally doesn't kill people. He steals largely for the thrill of it, and he's kind of the modern archetype of the gentleman thief sort of character. Most of the information I'm presenting here is taken from Superheroes, A French History by Javier Fournier. All the sources that I have found are referencing his work. Fournier argues that Fantomas and the other characters that follow him all borrow multiple character elements from The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas and Auguste Maquette, which was published in 1844. The Count of Monte Cristo is, of course, considered one of the greatest novels in Western literature. The story of the novel takes place in France, Italy, and the Mediterranean from 1815 to 1839. It's an adventure story that centers around themes of hope, justice, vengeance, mercy, and forgiveness. Before he can marry his fiancée, Mercedes, Edmond Dantes, a French 19-year-old first mate on a merchant ship called the Faron, is falsely accused of treason and is subsequently arrested and imprisoned without trial in the Chateau d'If, a grim island fortress off Marseille. A fellow prisoner, Abbe Faria, a former priest, correctly deduces that Dantes's romantic rival, Fernand Mondego, an envious crewman named Danglars, and a double-dealing magistrate named de Villefort are responsible for his imprisonment. Over the course of their time in the prison together, Faria educates Dantes, as well as teaching him fencing and other skills. Realizing that he's probably going to die soon, he tells Dantes about a treasure hoard that he found on the island of Monte Cristo. After Faria dies, Dantes escapes and finds the treasure. Under the guise of the wealthy and powerful and mysterious Count of Monte Cristo, he enters the fashionable Parisian world of the 1830s to avenge himself. So, in the character of Dantes, we see many of the elements that would be borrowed by Fantomas, Judex, the Shadow, and many others, such as the hero being wrongfully imprisoned, encountering a holy man who trains him in combat, as well as a variety of other subjects which he later uses against his enemies, operating with a secret identity and being immensely wealthy. But the character of Dantes, it seems, was actually inspired by a real person. Dumas wrote that the idea of revenge being a main theme in The Count of Monte Cristo came from an anecdote that was published in a memoir of incidents in France in 1838, that was written by a police archivist named Jacques Pouchet, titled Memoirs from the Archives of the Paris Police. Pouchet related the tale of a shoemaker, Pierre Picot, living in Nîmes in 1807, who was engaged to marry a rich woman when three jealous friends falsely accused him of being a spy. Picot was then placed under a form of house arrest, where he served as a servant to a rich Italian priest. When the priest died, he left his fortune to Picot, whom he had begun to regard as a son. Picot then spent years plotting his revenge on the three men who were responsible for his misfortune. He stabbed the first with a dagger, and then he poisoned the second one. The third man, named Lupian, had married Picot's fiancée while Picot was imprisoned. Picot lured Lupian's son into crime and got him arrested and sent to prison. He then lured Lupian's daughter into prostitution before finally stabbing and killing Lupian as well. Unlike Dantes, however, Picot didn't live happily ever after as he was eventually also killed. So, this 19th century Frenchman, in an indirect way, became the inspiration for some of the most popular characters in Western fiction, including Batman, who is arguably the most popular superhero in the world. 
In addition, there are other characters that inspired Batman who can themselves be traced back to Picot, such as Zorro, Dr. Sin, and the Scarlet Pimpernel. And that's not even including characters who themselves are influenced by Batman in various ways, such as Moon Knight, Daredevil, Midnighter, or The Shroud, among many others. I'll stop this video here. Let me know if you can think of any other characters that might have been inspired by the Count of Monte Cristo or by the Shadow. Tell me in the comments, and while you're at it, please do like this video and also sub to the channel. And while you're here, maybe check out some of my other videos, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.